Greetings this morning. Thank you for tuning in to the Notes for the Morning. We have been involved in trying to explain why or what the purpose is of these Notes for the Morning. And we're now ready for the fourth reason. And that is to excite the believer to desire truth. That is to know more of God. Some believers want to know more and more of God, while others seemingly do not. Our text for this particular devotion is in Psalm 42, verse 1 and 2. As the harp panteth after the water brooks, David writes, So panteth my soul after thee. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Some people desire God so much that they are just hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Jesus said in Matthew 5 and verse 6, those that hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. And so why should a believer, why should a believer desire to be filled with righteousness? Some would say, well, I'm saved. I know I'm saved and I'm going to heaven. And what, what else is there? That's all I've ever been told. Get saved, go to heaven. But knowing that you are born again or what we call saved, is really only the beginning of the Christian journey. Because the next thing that comes after your confession that Jesus is your Savior is what we call a progressive sanctification. That is a daily growing in Christ. You say, well, why would I need that? Paul explains that very plainly in Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 13 and 14. He writes, for everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So what we need First of all, as a babe in Christ, we need to grow. We need to grow on the knowledge of God. We need to learn about our Savior. We need to come to a place that we are in a place of maturity. We need to mature in Christ. In fact, Paul writes in Hebrews 6 and 1, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of the faith toward God. So our whole uh, being needs to grow up into Christ. We need to come to a place that we are settled in God. We need to come to a place to know the nature of God, the different characteristics of God. What does the Bible say about God? And so we learn in the face of Jesus Christ, the glory of God. So we study the life and work and ministry of Jesus Christ. And so Peter writes that we are to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? So we can bear fruit. Jesus himself brought this out in John 15, that we are to bear fruit, more fruit, and much fruit. We're to be fruit producers, fruit barriers, rather. The Spirit of God is what produces the fruit it is. What is the fruit? It's the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. That is love and joy and peace and long-suffering and goodness and gentleness and meekness and temperance, we need to grow in the aspects of 
the spirit. And when we grow, then we come to a place whereby we're not tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine, every slack cunning craftiness of men that lie in wait, Paul writes, to deceive us in Ephesians 4. And, and we can see that we need, in verse 14, we need stability. We need to grow up in Christ. We need to grow into the full stature of Christ. We need to grow unto perfection. Why do we need this growth? Why do we need not only so we can have fruit production, not only so we can come to maturity, not only come from being a milk drinker to a meat eater, but there is a race to run set before the children of God. And so he says, wherefore seeing in Hebrews 12 and 1, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now, I don't know whether you've ever heard a believer this morning that there is a race set before the children of God, but there is. It is a race of faithfulness. As we go along in our Christian journey, we are really on a pathway of developing and bringing our faith to maturity. And so what we do is we have some things we need to learn about ourselves. One is that we have the old man still dwelling in us. Now, what's so bad about that is that he wants to rule again. But when we were brought forth or born again by the spirit of truth, when we came to a knowledge that Jesus Christ is our savior, we come to a place of knowing, of knowing that we must understand that we have been placed in a race. It is a race of development. It is a race of faithfulness. It is at the end of the journey, uh, we will be crowned with that crown of faithfulness or that crown of righteousness. And so it's important. It's very important that we understand that we are in a developing stage as a child of God. Paul says that we're to work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. What does he mean, a working out of your own salvation? That is that which God has bestowed in you, the spirit of truth. There is a reason that God comes to live in you, not only because he died for you, but because he wants you to be his witness of his love, mercy, and grace upon this earth. And so this morning, what I want us to do in the beginning of this new study, we, we've left uh, Psalm 27, in verse 4, 5, and 6. Now we've come to say those things that might excite the children of God to come to God daily. Search out the scriptures. Have fellowship with God. Have a communion with God every morning. Start to grow. Feed upon the word. Get off the baby food and get on the meat, so to speak. And God will do his work in you. You will start to see a change in your life. You will start to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so this morning, I challenge you to take the book every morning, go to God in prayer, and begin to study the Word of God. Start to absorb the Word of God, because what will happen is you will be brought to a mature knowledge of Christ. You'll understand more about God. You'll understand more about the tests that you face, the things that are happening in your life, 
that they're really for good, that they are maturing you and confirming you and conforming you unto the image of Christ. And that's what we've been predestinated unto is we've been predestinated to be conformed to the image of Christ. Father, we thank you today for this time we've had together. We ask God that you bless each one that is listening this morning. I pray, God, there'll be something stirred in them, O oh God, to cause them to hunger after righteousness, for them to pant after you, God, for them to long for you, to long for more knowledge that will bring more peace, that will bring more maturity in their life, will bring more fruit in their life. Help them, O oh God, we pray, as we daily now, for some time to come, study about what would cause us to be excited about the Word of God. What does it do for us? In Jesus' name I pray, amen.